Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about this beautiful little animal right here. This is a spear point leaf tail gecko. Believe it or not, this guy right here is an adult male spear point leaf tail gecko. He's absolutely incredible. Cryptic little Europlatus or leaf tail gecko from Madagascar. These guys aren't too common in the trade, but they are proven to be proving to be very hardy and pretty easy to breed uh, so there's not much care information out there on them so I wanted to share with you exactly what I do with them uh, I'm no expert I've only been keeping them about a year but they are breeding very well for me I got all, lots of babies lots of eggs right now so I'll do my best to share what I do uh, with this amazing little species I'm Frank Payne biology teacher reptile breeder and former zookeeper I'm here to share with you my passion and experience working with these beautiful and fascinating animals. Welcome to Living Art. You can see that this male, he has some really cool spines all over his body. If you look at his tail, you see it's really ridged and marked. And if you look at the base of his tail, the hemipenal bulges are really obvious. That's how you tell um, the males from the females. I'm going to show you what a female looks like here in a second. The males also are quite a bit smaller than the females. They're very hoppy. All right, so this is an adult female. Try and get her to not hop off my hands because they are small and delicate and she's probably full of eggs right now. They breed like crazy. So the female you can see is much more smooth than the male, more brownish, less gray, no spikes running up and down. If you look at the tail, it's not notched. There's also no hemipenal bulges. And this is super obvious as adults, and even right out of the egg, you can tell immediately the males from the females. Uh, the males often have a little white teardrop, that you probably saw uh, when I had the other one out. But you can see they're just wonderful leaf mimics. You know when these and the girls especially are laying in the leaf litter I can't even see them most of the time pretty remarkable all right guys so this is how I keep my breeding spear point leaf tail geckos you can see the female right there in the center it's pretty dim in this cage just because I have a pretty thick canopy and that is intentional um, so at the very top if the animals want to go up to the top they can be exposed to some bright light as well as some UV light. I am using a Reptisun uh, T5 high output 10.0 bulb. Um, it's probably more than they need. You could definitely get away with a 5.0. That's just what I use on all my enclosures. And you can see that there's so much shaded area. Like the, the PVC enclosures that I'm using, there's a lot of the top that isn't exposed to the light. So they can get completely out of that UV if they want. And there's all sorts of gradients there. Very high UV up here, moderate, all the way down to absolutely nothing. So they have lots of choices, which is what we want. There's the male hanging out there. Kind of, they're all over the place right now just because um, I had them out for the video. So live plant in the center. This is a, a Ficus benjamina. You can use pothos. You can use any sort of common tropical garden plant. Uh, you notice how it is relatively dry in here. These guys do come from uh, the more dry region of Madagascar. I do have an automatic misting system that goes off at night and a few times throughout the day. You see that it's more damp here towards the front and very dry towards the back. Um, also, if you notice right here, I have a big pile of leaf litter. This is where the female will lay her eggs nine times out of ten and the rest is barren so I left the rest barren uh, for a reason because I don't want her laying anywhere this is a pretty big enclosure it's two feet deep um, 12 inches wide only but about a foot and a half tall so this is a big enclosure for such a tiny little gecko so I, I can't be digging through there trying to find the eggs every month so I have this pile of leaf litter right here in the front so um, whenever I think the female is set to lay every three to four weeks I'll go digging through there the only other cage furnishing there you can see is I do have a container of pure calcium. I'm not sure if they need that. It's pure calcium powder. Uh, I do provide that for a lot of my day geckos and I know that because these animals do reproduce pretty, you know, pretty excessively, you know, laying eggs at least once a month. I do want to give them calcium if, in case they choose to. I do dust the feeders every single time as well. Uh, speaking of feeders, I feed them three or four times a week. Um, quarter to half inch crickets and small roaches. I haven't really done anything else. That's really about it. I do dust every single feeding with uh, Rapashi Calcium Plus 
um, supplement powder. And that seems to work out really well. And you know, maybe three, four, five, six insects per animal. Nothing too excessive. Pretty straightforward. Don't let it get too wet in most of the enclosure. Let it really dry out. More humid and wet at night, drier during the day. Uh, temperatures in the warmest spot is maybe up in the 80s, high 80s at most. And then down here towards the bottom, low to mid 70s, all sorts of gradients. That's the most important thing with keeping reptiles is all sorts of gradients of, of everything, of heat, of light, of water. The gradients is so that they can choose and give them enough space to move around so that they can make the choices that they need. So here is how I incubate the eggs. They do lay two eggs at a time. And on the bottom there is wet uh, moss. So the moss is quite saturated, but then I have the eggs sitting in little cups that are filled with dry vermiculite. So the vermiculite itself that the eggs are sitting on is dry, but then the moss is very wet. And then of course I have a lid, everything labeled up with when they were laid and hatched, that completely seals it up. Absolutely no holes in the incubation container, not needed. Uh, so it keeps it nice and humid, but the eggs themselves are dry to the touch, just humid air surrounding them. I found that they do hatch in approximately three months, uh, slightly higher, sl slightly more than that, slightly less, depending on incubation temperature. Uh, for incubation temperature, it's usually in the low to mid 70s for me with a drop at night. I don't use a set incubator these days for pretty much anything. I like it to be, you know, day night variation as eggs, especially ones that are laid very close to the surface, just under some leaves, they're going to experience pretty, pretty strong uh, day night variation and also some seasonal variation too. The ones in the winter take a little bit longer to hatch. The ones in the summer hatch a little bit quicker. This is how I keep the babies exactly like the adults, except on a smaller scale. Also, uh, PVC enclosures. You know, this seems pretty big and I think there's, there he is right there. There's, there's the guy that's in there. Right now I'm keeping them all individually, although I am going to start now that I'm producing more, start keeping them with their clutch mates. Um, from what I understand, talking to people with more experience than me, they do just fine when being kept with their clutch mates. Look how tiny that thing is compared to this enclosure. This enclosure is only 8 inches wide, 12 inches tall, and 12 inches deep, and it's absolutely giant for them. Uh, exactly like the adults, live plants, living soil, branches, lots of shade, good strong UV light that they can access when they choose to and that they can get away from. Automatic misting system, you don't need, but you know, they definitely need, I don't give them a water bowl. They get sprayed every night and they can lick up the moisture, have a nice strong humidity spike at night and drying out during the day. Very important that they do dry out during the day. They do not want to be saturated all the time. All right guys, I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about how I keep and breed the spear point leaf tail gecko. Um, they are becoming a little bit more common, I think. There's a few people that are producing them in decent numbers. I'm starting to do so myself, but still probably uh, one of the least common, uh, if not the m least common of all the leaf tail geckos, much less common than its cousin, the more commonly known satanic leaf tail gecko. Um, I will definitely be releasing some male males that I produce this year. I probably won't be selling any females. Emails. I'll be ha hanging on to those this year uh, to build up my breeding group but then eventually the goal is to get a bunch more out there because they are an amazing little species much hardier than any other Europlatus I've ever worked with and very easy to breed too so I hope they do become more common and I hope this was helpful if it was please do like and subscribe to the channel share it out there and I'll see you next time see ya